It's 8 o'clock. Welcome to Tribe TV. So good to have you with us. If you're watching on Facebook, start a watch party. If you're on YouTube, share the link. Uh, if you're watching on demand, share it anyway, right? Let's get the good stuff out there for people to hear. Uh, we are talking about surviving lockdown this week. And uh, I think one of the secrets to surviving lockdown is gratitude. You know, I, I, I can feel... I have felt a little bit kind of, you know, down and grumpy and sorry for myself at times while I sit there. I remember this one time sitting there eating baked camembert cooked with garlic and rosemary, feeling sorry for myself. And it's then when I, I kind of watched myself doing it and realised, Jared, you were in a very nice Western lockdown. You need to grow up and start to be grateful for what you have got. It's so easy. I don't think the media helps right now, do they? But it's so easy to get into a situation where we really are losing a sense of good perspective um, about how the majority of us, not all I know, but the majority of us are very blessed and in parts of the world where let's just say a Western lockdown is very different to a lockdown in the third world. And in fact, well, tonight I'm going to take you to Colombia. One of my dear friends, David Taylor, you won't meet his wife on this, but Daryl Ruth Taylor too and all their family are in Colombia working amongst the poorest of the poor. They've been out there 20 years and it's a remarkable story. I wish I could tell it you all, but I'm just going to jump to what they're doing right now. They have about six or seven projects along the Colombian coast and up into the deserts of Colombia and they educate around 1500 children every single week they they feed them these are the poorest of the poor kids give them medical programs um, give them the gospel and give them the life of Jesus Christ while they're at it they dig wells they put up solar panels they do all kinds of stuff among some of the poorest communities and of course you find yourself not in some nice western house with the Sainsbury's around the corner but rather in a corrugated iron hut with a dusty floor and then now you find yourself in lockdown who knows that that world is very very different so i just think one of the one of the things we need to remember is that a lot of parts of the world are having it much rougher than we've had in in europe or in other parts of the western world we are we are comparatively very very blessed indeed and so i thought it'd be great to chat to david about what lockdown is like in colombia how their projects and schools and church plants are coping with all the change and then there's just a, a, a quite an unusual and tragic incident that's happened very recently and i just think as people in this community if you watch tri tv and you're connected to vicky and i in some way or maybe you're even in the tri part of our global online community um, then uh, I think it's something that perhaps we could really help with. So at the end of the program, I'm going to share with you how we could help with this particular incident that's come about and help David Taylor reach the poorest of the poor, even in the midst of lockdown. So here we go. Let's go to David Taylor in Colombia and hear how he's doing. Dave, great to see you. How are you doing in Colombia? Well, we're doing pretty well, uh, considering the circumstances that we find ourselves in I know. Uh, due to the virus, COVID-19. It's, it's been uh, kind of unprecedented times, hasn't it, that we've been living in for the last four or five months. Really? I mean, you and your family all well? Yeah, I mean, we're doing, we're doing pretty good. And Maria Camila's doing virtual classes from the university. Wow. You know, she's studying... Uh, international business and marketing. Um, Nathan and Hudson are doing virtual classes from the Oasis of Hope School. Yeah. Um, virtual classes have worked surprisingly well. You know, everyone seems to be benefiting from it. Uh, you know, any student <coughs> who doesn't, for instance, have a computer or a kind of smartphone or something at home where they can get our classes you know, they can go to an internet cafe in their, you know, neighborhood because they're just everywhere. Wow. You know, but most people have got some kind of phone, some kind of apparatus. And, and at the very, you know, the very end of things, if they don't have any of those things, their parents can come to the school gates where we'll give them a printed out paper form of the uh, classes for that week. And then they just 
do them at home and then bring them back. Wow. So we, we're well covered with the vet stuff. We're very, very, very uh, excited about it. Yeah. So, I mean, you, you, your kids are blessed there. Look, tell everybody a little bit about what lockdown looks like in Colombia, because I know every time, even this week, we'll, we've been speaking to people in, people in Melbourne, Australia and Cape Town, South Africa. What are the lockdown rules like for you guys in Colombia? Because it's kind of different everywhere. What kind of rules are you guys dealing with? Uh, they're very stringent rules indeed compared to perhaps the USA and the UK. Um, we actually can only go out once a week and that has to be the day that kind of, it's the last digit of your ID number. So if you're caught out on a day when it doesn't correspond to your digital number, then you are actually liable to be arrested. So it's very, very stringent. We're on total lockdown. You know, I live in Rodadero, which is a, like a tourist uh, place and it's totally empty. The beach is off limits to everyone. It's closed down. You can't go to the beach. Um, so yeah, it, it's a total lockdown here. Wow. You know? Wow. And then, so um, you, you live in a, in a tourist area, but I, I've, I've been to where you live and the work, let's say the kind of the headquarters of your work is is over the road from, it's quite a nice area, then you just cross a highway and suddenly you're in the third world, which is where an immense amount of your work goes on and then right up the coast and into the desert, all that kind of thing. How is this, uh, the pandemic affecting uh, your projects, your schools, your church plants? Could you, could you maybe tell us about one of those and some of the practical difficulties that you're having with helping the poorest of the poor now in a situation like this? Yeah, I mean, it's obviously affected the the people we work with, which is the people who are basically on the poor end of uh, life, poor side of life. Um, you know, typical project might be Pueblo Viejo, um, where we have built a church. So we have a church plant there. We have a social action project there where we have approximately 160 kids wow. arrive at seven in the morning you know, get breakfast, uh, have their lunch, have preschool academic studies. Um, so that's a very, you know, vibrant project. Yeah. So I was covered, you know, affected that, well, we can't have school anymore. We can't meet together. The church can't meet together. Um, but w what basically has happened is we can still send the money um, and resources to that project and uh, through bank transfer and stuff like that. And so they continue to, to feed the population, the community. Um, you know, COVID spread quite quickly in that particular barrier of Pueblo Viejo. So they had to, you know, really be careful and adhere to social distancing and stuff like that. And then just a few weeks ago, we had the unfortunate petrol tanker tragedy. Oh, te now um, tell us uh, about this. This is a major <clears throat> incident. Yeah, the, a petrol tanker or vehicle had come off the road. And apparently the driver had swerved to miss some, some animal that was on the road and he, he kind of turned over on one side. And the tanker began leaking petrol. Uh, and the or lots of the community so this is an opportunity to actually siphon um, the petrol illegally and, and that's what they were doing they were siphoning the petrol and someone wanted to steal the battery from the cab of the petrol tanker and when they removed the battery it created a spark which you know set off the, the explosion so, you know, you maybe had like 120, 130 people all gathered, not just around the tanker, but gathered just maybe a, a slight distance away. And the explosion was horrendous, um, you know, beyond sad. Uh, killed 44 people and about 80 others were left with, you know, severe burns, life, life's, you know, scarred for life. Uh, so a very, very bad situation, um, which really brought to surface all the imbalance in society here in Colombia, that these people were desperate. They were desperate through, you know, 
COVID-19 and not having no electricity, not having no drinking water, not having any, you know, sanitation, everything in life, what they'd been born into um, was a negative in some ways. And it, it all came to culmination at that one moment at that petrol tanker when, you know, so many lives were lost. So we're not only addressing the immediate problem and we're having to look at the trying to alleviate that poverty. That's why I've set up that new project, Alleviating Poverty. Uh, and we're going to get, you know, we're really going to do as much as we can to help the people and um, break that cycle of poverty, which they find themselves in now. So the petrol tanker tragedy was a re- totally horrendous. What What can we do to help you help the families affected by that. Now, now I know you've 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 already told me that I think you've helped. Was it forty five or fifty five of the families that were affected? But there's more you want to do. Can you tell us how we could help you? Yeah, we, at present we've helped fifty five families, um, and of course we want to, you know, raise that number exponentially. Uh, there's thousands live there who are living in poverty. <clears throat> How can we help? Well, we've, we've got a fundraiser going at the moment. You can find it on the website. Um, and um, just as much uh, resource as we can get together, we can help more people. Um, we're concentrated on um, food, um, mainly rice, beans, and cooking oil to cook those rice and beans with and drinking water. That's a basic diet here in Colombia, rice and beans. Everyone eats rice and beans. So if they've got rice and beans and they've got something to cook it with, you know, they can survive. Drinking water, of course, very, very important because the the majority of the illnesses, what the people get, uh, like, you know, Amoebas, I'm not sure what that word is in English, but pa- parasites of the stomach yeah. are caused by, you know, drinking bad water. <clears throat> so that's important to us as well. Now, we've just got into partnership with this faith-based global international charity called Malteser International. And, and they're partnering with us and providing only medical um, requirements that the people need. We're, we're just organising a big campaign at the moment. We've just completed a two-week campaign with Maltese, Malteser International at the Oasis of Hope Foundation, which was hugely successful. I mean, they came with all their equipment, you know, with all their masks and breathing apparatus, you know, they had everything that was required. And they literally saw hundreds of people so, right, we're thinking we're going to multiply that tenfold in, in the area of Pueblo Viejo. <clears throat> and La Isla is another place where we have our latest um, church plant. That's another desperately needy place. And there's many Venezuelan refugees live in that place as well. So that, that's another thing we're trying to address at the moment is the problem with Venezuelan refugees. So, yeah, so the food and the medical care is really lining up with, you know, a vision that God gave me early this year, which was a 2020 vision for Colombia. So you were um, you were saying to me earlier that uh, my my dad gave you a couple of prophetic words, which is kind of helping you restructure a little bit. Uh, in 2020, I wouldn't even say a little bit. It sounds like there's some quite exciting developments. But then you also, just before we came on, you mentioned a word given to you by someone in the States. And when I just heard you talking about that, I found it really quite impactful. Um, somebody prophesied or just shared just the briefest of words. Uh, don't forget the poor. Would you talk a, a little bit about about that? Because I, I was quite moved when you were talking about that earlier. This this word, don't forget the poor, Um uh, now you've been helping the poor for 20 years in Colombia, but how has it impacted you even more just to think, right, we've got to get out there and do even more for the poor? Yeah, when this friend of mine, uh, Bettina, who's part of the Times Square Church in, in New York, uh, she started a, 
a new project herself called Five on Five or some more, where she's asked for five dollars for the poor. Uh, and you know, and then she said, as we finished the conversation, David, remember the poor. Hmm. And I thought, well, I haven't ever forgotten the poor, have I? And but as I kind of pondered on that word, you know, I started realizing that, you know, the, there's one thing to work with the poor and, and see that the way out of that poverty is through education. We believe that education is the catalyst that breaks the uh, chain of poverty. Um, and we've always got our projects and stuff, but when she said that, I started to focus my mind about how much, how much more we could do. Wow. Uh, and as a leader, you'll know yourself, Jared, that um, you know, when we focus our mind on something, when we prioritize it, it it's got the ability uh, to grow to something bigger than it's ever been before. Uh, and as I started concentrating my mind on, on the poor and feeding the poor uh, and just basically providing the necessities, the basic necessities of life uh, for them, um, I, I kind of, God started speaking to me about how I could actually do that. Wow. Uh, and, you know, I'm really excited about, you know, how things are panning out at the moment, you know, just by our new partnership with this global international faith-based ministry called Malteser International. I mean, it, it, it's awesome. It's like, where did that come from? Because they contacted us. We did not contact them. Wow. They contacted us and said, is there any possibility that you could facilitate a medical campaign for us? We have the resources, but we actually don't have the places to, to do it. Wow. Uh, right. Which places you were interested in? We're specifically interested in the northeast of Colombia, which is where we are, and the Wayu Indian tribe. Wow. In the Guay I mean, come on. You yeah, know. incredible. Could it, could it get any more specific than that? Yeah, the actual the actual areas where we where we work, because I've been called to the Atlantic coast, Caribbean coast of Colombia, uh, which goes from basically Cartagena to La Guaira, where the Wayu live, and and that's where I'll always concentrate my efforts in my yeah. ministry. That that's the little corner of the universe what God's called me to work in. Yeah. Uh, others get called to Timbuktu. Or, or wherever, um, but mine is is there, right? And and I will never, um, you know, move outside of the parameters what God has given me. Yeah. And and that's why we punch above our weight. That's why we achieve so much. Yeah. Because we concentrate our efforts on actually what God has told us to do, and we don't go outside of that. And I, I think that's why we succeeded. Yeah. <clears throat> and what I what I love about what you do and have been doing for 20 plus years now is when we give to you it actually goes into the projects and to actually help the lives you know where uh columbia childcare doesn't have some humongous administration center somewhere and and you know masses of organization to pay for you are on the ground doing the work i mean this is a family thing your your family's involved you've got team and workers across the country so I'm, I, I'm going to guess that, you know, with all the kids in school, as, as, as lockdown hopefully begins to come to an end, kids are going to be coming back to school. I know you're supporting them now, but how can people that are watching support the projects you're already doing, uh, you know, the schools, the church planting, the feeding programs, the medical care, but also uh, to help you go even further. I can't believe you're saying you're going to do more to alleviate poverty. You, you do more than anyone I know. So it's just amazing that you, you would take that word on the chin and say, I'm going to go even deeper then and do it even more. Only God can do that. Um, how can we support you to really make all of those things happen? I, I mean, I'm guessing it's straight up. Can we give to you to help you do this with all of your team? How can we do that? Well, you, you can do that in two ways, basically. Uh, <clears throat> regarding the how do we do more, as a ch church leader, you know that everything boils down really to strategy, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. So as we've changed our strategy now, 
we find that we'll need more resources, you know, uh, and, and that, that can be given in two ways. You know, historically, we've always concentrated on church, uh, on sponsorship, <clears throat> you know, 22 pounds a month, you know, provides a Christian education, regular meals, a school uniform um, for a child. Uh, so, you know, and they, that's what they get. You know, there's no like, uh, you know, well, we have to do a little bit over here. That £22 a month actually goes on that sponsorship and nothing else. Um, and the second way that we could be supported is through partnership. Now, partnership is regarded as, regarded as undesignated funds. So with the undesignated funds, we can pay our security men because we have five security men 24 seven. You know, we have admin staff, you know, we have cleaners, we have kitchen staff, we have a gardener, you know, we have all these people to pay uh, on a regular basis, not on a regular basis, on a basis, which we have to do because we contractually bound yeah. to them that contractually bound is something that if you can avoid it, avoid it. But we are, whether it's COVID-19 or what, whatever it is, we have to find that wage every month for those people. Yeah. Okay. Until the end of this year, because yeah. our contractually boundness only lasts for 12 months of any year. And then we uh, liquidate the people and they, so they get a Christmas bonus in other words. And then we just pick them up again, you know, in the January, if we want to return their services. So partnership is very important to us and partnership can obviously mean any amount, you know, partnership with us will definitely go to alleviating poverty, buying the food, you know, and prov providing medicines, what our new partnership with Maltese or International perhaps doesn't cover. So it covers a lot of things, does, you know, alleviate, uh, does the um, partnership. It also helps us to continue our evangelistic thrust, because as I'm talking about feeding the poor and alleviating poverty, uh, that doesn't come without evangelism. Now, before we you know, have any food distribution, we actually have an evangelistic message before we actually distribute the food. It's a very simplistic evangelistic message. We, we don't go into hermeneutics, okay, <laughs> when day times. You know, I focus on Nicodemus, the Pharisee, who went to Jesus in the dead of night and said, I've got all this knowledge. I know all the scriptures, but can you tell me how do I get to heaven? Yeah. And of course, Jesus said to him, you must be born again and, and then be filled with the spirit. So we concentrate all our evangelistic efforts on that efforts, on that simplistic message of you must be born again. And then at that very moment, we're going to ask them to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Because if that happens, you're going to see a seismic shift in, in the poverty situation in Colombia. Yeah. And, and we believe that there's more than one way to skin a cat. So as we're feeding these people, you know, as we're giving medical attention, we have one thing in our minds, and that's the Great Commission. And that's why I'm here, Jared. I'm not, I'm, I know I, th this is all great stuff, what we do, and it, it's, we're so grateful for God. And I am personally am so grateful to God that, that he's trusted me uh, to do this. But I never take my eyes off the ball and realize that these people really have got nothing if they've got all these things that we provide and then end up in hell. Then what good has it been? Yeah. So, you know, that is basically why myself and Dari lose my, my, you know, ride shotgun with me. <laughs> no matter what I'm doing is being given a new title this year of executive director of all things pertaining to the Oasis of Hope Foundation in Colombia. She's doing an awesome job and works, you know, like a 60 hour week every week for pretty much for pennies. Wow. You know, we you know we live by faith. We tell family, we don't receive a wage from anywhere. Where I don't take one penny from the foundations in the UK, the USA, or here in Colombia. You know, I live by faith. So you know, and God has provided exceedingly and abundantly more than I could have ever envisaged. 
you know, when I started out on this journey. Come on. Well, you are remarkable and Darry Luth is too. Um, we, we love you lots. I'm, I'm praying that as people watch this, they'll be, they'll be moved by uh, the ability for us to, to be a global family. And if we can give to all that you are doing through Columbia Child Care, um, through Oasis, as, as I think uh, it's known as in Colombia and is becoming more and more known under that name around the world. Um, we we want to give to you to enable you to do everything that God puts in your heart, whether that's sponsoring a child, which is fabulous, or partnering in general, which will enable you to do all kinds of things uh, to alleviate poverty that aren't just education related. Um, I just pray that people really would do that. So um, thank you for spending some time with us, David. We really appreciate it. We're praying for you in lockdown and for all your family and the thousands of lives that you touch, making a huge difference there in Colombia. I'll talk to you soon. Lots of love and see you soon. Okay, God bless. Bye-bye. God bless you, Jared and family, and thanks for the opportunity of sharing what we do here in Colombia. Wow. Well, I hope you found that inspiring. Um, we're going to put details of how you can support David and all that he's doing in Colombia with the ministry Oasis of Hope. If you want to sponsor a child, that would be fantastic. Vicky and I sponsored two children, uh, getting them through school, helping to pay for their education, uh, uh, uniform, food, medical program, stuff like that. And, you know, the great thing 20 years on is we're able to see that from when these schools began for the poorest of the poor in Colombia, um, when, when the children were originally coming through the schools and out the other side, they would have been kind of glad to get any basic job at the most basic level, let's just say. But now those kids are coming out of school with aspirations. They're all going to university now. They've got aspirations of becoming doctors and politicians and missionaries and pastors and influencers to transform the nation. So 20 years on, boy, oh boy, they are beginning to really touch and transform a nation. So we love sponsoring children uh, at the Columbia Child Care Schools. Uh, but as well, if if you can partner just to give them the broader funds so they can dig wells and alleviate poverty in more general ways. And as David said, some of the basic stuff that doesn't get covered when you sponsor a child, like security guards and all these things that we might not think of, um, then that will be fantastic. Partner with David if you can. But also this tragic tanker incident that has affected so many families in the region. This is a moment when we can step in with the gospel and with the good things of the kingdom of God. Can you give to help David support all these new families that they will have come across because of this tragic incident? Um, then all those details are with this program. We're gonna put some details on the screen as well. And let's see how we together can help and invest to transform and touch some of the poorest lives that are really struggling through lockdown. Um, let's see what we can do in this time. Is that okay? We could do that. Um, as always, I'm going to end with telling you about our global online learning community. There's currently 50% off if you want to join that. Um, have a little listen. Uh, but to be honest, I'd much rather you, you spent your money on supporting David right now. Um, we really do want to see all that he's doing grow to a whole new phase in God as we step through 2020, <laughs> oh boy, that's what it feels like, isn't it? And into the beyond and all that God has for us. It's been wonderful to be with you tonight and to be able to share with you. Wonderful to be with you these three days and to connect with Cape Town, Melbourne, and now Columbia. Um, you know, God is still on his throne. We can be grateful that he's still in charge. We're going to come through this. We're going to come out the other end. And you know what I really feel? And we're talking as leaders in Revive Church, the church that I'm blessed and honoured to lead is we want to march out of lockdown. We want to come out in triumph. We want to come out looking for a move of God and looking for harvest. So it's time for the church to step up and do some big and interesting and, and exciting stuff to reach this world. Why? Because people are really ready to hear some good news. They're really ready for some hope. I was walking through my village the other day and I had a t-shirt on and it was it was the cross with the word hope and the crossbar written in. And 
One lady turned and said, Oh, I do like your T-shirt. And I stood there, opened my shirt so she could see it fully, that it was the cross of Jesus Christ. And I said, Yes, the world needs this kind of hope right now, doesn't it? And that's what we can bring people. Come on, church. Let's be bold. Let's be strong. Let's trust God to restore us and keep us. And let's step out of lockdown into all that he's got for us. God bless you. Thanks for joining us tonight on Tribe TV. What is the tribe, I hear you ask? Well, it's a global online learning community. There are loads of us around the world interacting, growing, stretching in the things of God together and having fun as we learn. There's three tiers in the tribe. Tier one is basic access to our tribe zone. It is an online learning zone. We use the same software as Harvard University. So it's great, it's powerful, it's intuitive, and it works really well on everything from a tablet to a phone to a laptop. And you can grow with us in the things of God over everything from leadership to church growth to faith, things of the spirit, prophetic, the miraculous. It's all there, 500 modules of audio, video e-courses and stuff like that. As well as that, you get a private Facebook group where you can interact with Vicky and I, and we can be growing in the things of God together. Tier two is all of that, but it's for leaders. It's our global leadership tribe. And so it has a lot more leadership content as well. You get four books the moment that you join sent to you, and then you will get every book I write in the period of your membership sent to you free of charge. We want to invest in leaders. And so it's much more interactive at tier two. Tier three is where 10 leaders in one team can join together so you can learn and grow. It is a brilliant resource to give to all of your team. You don't always want to lose them as they head off to Bible school. You want to train them right where they are in a training community, and that's what this is. So if tier three interests you, have a little look at that. Let me show you some testimonials of what people are saying about their life and learning with the tribe. Hey there, it's Roma Waterman here from Melbourne, Australia. I just want to say I'm amazed at the amount of resources that are in tribe and the fresh content that's constantly being added. I say this with complete truthfulness. I think Pastor Jared Cooper is one of the best teachers in leadership and the prophetic and creativity that I have heard in the world. So I highly recommend it. I highly recommend that you sign up and, and be part of such an amazing community. Hi, my name's Dave Mullinder. I'm the pastor of Grace Church Bridlington and we connected with the tribe because we knew a lot of the people and the voices that we heard were encouraging and inspiring. A lot of prophetic voices that helped us and guided us. It helped us to feel like we were part of the global picture and not just our little part of the jigsaw but above all things we learnt two specific things practical and spiritual and the practical things that we have taken principles from the tribe and applied them to our church which means we manage it better we present it better we make it look better and sound better and the practical principles have been brilliant but there is also the spiritual principles of apostolic anointing and as we've listened and applied spiritual principles into our church we've actually seen the church start to grow and we believe that we're about to hit the second wave of growth from connecting uh, to the tribe so we want to say god bless you thanks for doing what you're doing and encourage you to get involved if you can with the tribe hi i love the tribe because it's a place of the prophetic it's a place of fun and with a healthy dose of the practical included as well there's a whole wealth of resources on there that will keep you going for years and on such a range of subjects that you could do bible school in your pajamas if you wanted to and where else could you get an international apostle like jared answering your questions it's just brilliant so if you ever feel a bit like elijah and thinking oh poor old me i'm the only one left who's been zealous for god then you can just log into the tribe community and discover no actually god's reserved a whole remnant of people who are who are there ready and waiting to encourage each other on and do great things for god's kingdom so if that sounds like your cup of tea come over and join us it would be lovely to meet you isn't that incredible head to jaredcooper.net and come on join this family of people growing in the things of god growing in the word growing in the spirit and enjoying this journey of walking in god together you don't have to be alone you don't have to make it up as you go along come and join the tribe and let's enjoy life together <laughs>